At this place in history, we're wrapping up Dairy History Month. We're in beautiful Rygate Corner with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins, our last farm and our oldest farm. It is. We're at the Nelson Family Farm, and I recently learned that Nelson is a modern pronunciation of Nielsen, and a guy by the name of Nielsen came over here from Scotland as part of the Scotch American Farmers Association that purchased what is now the town of Rygate. So they bought it from the president of Princeton University, who probably had never seen the space. Um, they came over here, uh, they mapped it, they sold it to their, their friends and family and built it into you know, the beautiful metropolis that Rygate is now. But this farm has been in continuous operation since before the American Revolution, which is, I think, really cool. Bill and Jenny Nelson operate Homemakers Farm. Bill is the seventh generation in the Nelson family to do so and works with his sons, the eighth. I believe that the first farm was really in 1774, but it was really located about a mile away. And that was where the actual William H. Nielsen settled. Then four farms, that were all owned by his sons cropped up here in uh, Rygate Corner. So we're on the farm that belonged to John, the uh, one of the sons. Do you know why they chose this particular place? Well, I believe it was because it reminded them a lot of Scotland. And they said that it wasn't too far from the Connecticut River where they could get uh, you know, um, merchandise back and forth on the river. And uh, of course, it wasn't long before they had a uh, railroad uh, tracks through Wells River and really into East Rygate as well. For the very first farmers, of course, they, you know, had their milk in cans that was taken to local creameries. We have a local creamery that's about a half a mile north of here. And then uh, they started putting the milk from milk cans into tankers and taking it straight to Boston to the fluid market. And that's kind of how you know, the dairy industry really got established here in Vermont. And of course, we make way more milk than we can drink here in Vermont. With a little over 200 milkers and about the same number of young stock, Bill and his son stay busy. We have a mixed herd of cattle, Holsteins, a few Ayrshires and Jerseys, one brown Swiss and two Guernseys. We uh, crop about uh, 350 acres of land, corn, hay. The 24-7 commitment, as Bill puts it, doesn't leave much time to ruminate on the farm's legacy. What does it mean to you to dairy on a farm that has such rich history? You don't think about that a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, really, you know. I, I mean, I, I respect it and I, I like it, but I, I'm not really hung up on it a lot either. Some of the history that was so prominent in these rural areas of Vermont sort of has gotten diluted a lot, too, over the last 40, 50 years because of the way people have Move, move around a lot now, and loss of, loss of some of your farms and your your rural infrastructure is kind of kind of shattered in some areas, and uh, and that's kind of a big deal too, really. When posed the same question, Jenny has a slightly different reaction. Does it make you proud to be part of a family that plays such an integral role in the history of dairy in Vermont? Sure it does. Yeah. For the last 30 years I've been <laughs> raving about dairy farming. <laughs> I even used to roll out a sheet of paper that had all the businesses that we did business with, wow. just so you could see that economic engine. And I've done my very best to get people to drink more milk. At this place in history.